Hey folks, welcome to another video. In this video, we'll be discussing about an important long QT syndrome, the Brugada syndrome. Introduction. The Brugada syndrome is an autosomal dominant genetic disorder with variable expression characterized by abnormal findings on the surface electrocardiogram in conjunction with an increased risk of ventricular tachyarrhythmias and sudden cardiac death. Typically, the ECG findings consist of a pseudo right bundle branch block and persistent ST segment elevations in the leads V1 and V2, although isolated cases have been described with similar findings involving the inferior ECG leads. Here's an image of a 12 lead electrocardiogram from a patient with Brugada syndrome which demonstrates downsloping ST elevations as seen here in the chest leads V1 and V2. Also note that there is ST segment elevation along with a T wave inversion in the right precordial chest leads V1 and V2. Note that the QRS is normal. The widened S wave in the left lateral leads V5 and V6 that is characteristic of right bundle branch block is absent as seen here in this ECG. Brugada pattern versus Brugada syndrome. These are two terms distinguished by the presence or absence of symptoms which have been used to describe patients with the typical ECG findings of a pseudo right bundle branch block and persistent ST segment elevations in the leads V1 and V2. Patients with typical ECG features who are asymptomatic and have no other clinical criteria are said to have the Brugada pattern. Patients with typical ECG features who have experienced a sudden cardiac death or a sustained ventricular tachyarrhythmia or who have one or more of the other associated clinical criteria are said to have the Brugada syndrome. Patients with ventricular premature beats or non-sustained ventricular tachycardia, however, are generally not considered to have Brugada syndrome, but only the Brugada pattern. Persons with either the Brugada pattern or the Brugada syndrome can have identical findings on the surface ECG. The Brugada ECG pattern is more common in men than in women, with estimates ranging from 2 to 9 times more likely in men. Brugada pattern ECG and Brugada syndrome are usually diagnosed in adulthood and the mean age of diagnosis is 41 years. Patients with schizophrenia appear significantly more likely to have Brugada pattern ECGs than the general population. Pathogenesis A variety of factors may contribute to the electrocardiographic and clinical manifestations of Brugada syndrome, including mutations in the cardiac sodium channels, the SCN genes, right ventricular abnormalities, autonomic tone, fever, and the use of cocaine and certain psychotropic drugs. Genetics The Brugada syndrome demonstrates autosomal dominant inheritance with variable expression. Let me give you a quick note on variable expression. Although autosomal dominant implies that every generation is affected, variable expression implies that although the defective gene is inherited, the expression or the full-blown nature of the disease may not be evident in all the generations. Another classical example for autosomal dominant inheritance with variable expression is seen with von Recklinghausen's disease or neurofibromatosis type 1. In these diseases, the defective gene is transmitted to the subsequent generations, but the full-blown expression of the defective gene is not evident in all of the generations to which the genes have been transferred to. The same is with Brugada syndrome too. Moving on, the genetic analysis has led to the identification of purportedly causative mutations in the sodium channel genes, the SCN5A and the SCN10A, encoding the subunits of a cardiac sodium channel.
sodium channel genes, the defective myocardial sodium channels reduce sodium inflow currents, thereby reducing the duration of normal action potentials. In the right ventricular outflow tract epicardium, there is a prominent transient outward current called the itocurrent. It causes marked shortening of the action potential in the setting of a reduced sodium inflow. The relationship between sodium channel abnormalities and ST segment elevation is not fully understood. The ventricular myocardium is composed of at least three electrophysiologically distinct cell types, the epicardial cells, the endocardial cells, and the M cells. The ST segment elevation and T wave inversions seen in the right precordial leads in Brugada pattern ECGs are thought to be due to an alteration in the action potential in the epicardial and possibly the M cells, but not the endocardial cells. Other sodium channel mutations. Mutation in the SCN1B, an accessory subunit that interacts with the sodium channel and is also associated with conduction system disease. Mutations in the GPD1 type L, a gene that affects trafficking of the sodium channel, can also cause Brugada pattern. Clinical presentation. Most clinical manifestations of the Brugada syndrome are related to life-threatening ventricular arrhythmias. Sudden cardiac death resulting from a ventricular tachyarrhythmia may be the initial presentation of Brugada syndrome in as many as one-third of the patients. Most often, the presenting arrhythmia is ventricular fibrillation or a polymorphic ventricular tachycardia. Patients may also present with an episode of syncope with features suggestive of a tachyarrhythmic cause of the syncope. Palpitations related to ventricular tachyarrhythmia are not common in the Brugada syndrome, but patients may present with palpitations related to atrial fibrillation, which is associated with Brugada syndrome and may be the first presentation of the disease. Nocturnal agonal respiration is also described and is part of the diagnostic criteria. Patients with the Brugada pattern ECG without any apparent symptoms are typically identified when an ECG is performed for another reason, like in the case of preoperative evaluation of a person or an annual physical examination, so on and so forth. Or it can also be as a part of a screening of first-degree relatives of a Brugada problem or a proband.